We are going to talk about the importance of a treatment order with pheochromocytoma. But first, let's recall a few basic information. Hypertension is sustained elevation in arterial blood pressure. Hypertension is classified into primary hypertension, secondary hypertension. Over 90% of individuals with high blood pressure have essential hypertension, whereas less than 10% of patients have secondary hypertension. Either a comorbid disease or a drug is responsible for elevating a blood pressure with secondary hypertension. Since most patients with a primary hypertension have a few symptoms, patients with secondary hypertension might have signs and symptoms suggestive of the underlying disorder. So removing the offending agent when feasible or retreating correcting the underlying comorbid condition should be the first step in the management. Pheochromocytoma is one of the underlying causes resulting in secondary hypertension. The occurrence of headaches, palpitation, sweating, and orthostatic hypotension in a person with hypertension should alert the physician to consider the diagnosis of pheochromocytoma. What is pheochromocytoma? Pheochromocytoma is a catecholamine secreting a tumor of cells derived from the adrenal medulla. These catecholamines can act on adrenergic receptors alpha receptors and beta receptors. With regards to alpha-1 receptors activation, alpha-1 receptors are located throughout the body. But what I want to remember is peripheral vascular system has a lot of alpha-1 receptors and their activation leads to vasoconstriction so we get an increase in blood pressure. With regards to beta-1 receptors activation, beta-1 receptors are found in the heart. So their activation leads to increased cardiac output and heart rate so we can get tachycardia. With regards to beta-2 receptors activation, these receptors are involved in vasodilation as they are distributed in the peripheral vascular system. But good to mention that vascular smooth muscle contains much more alpha-1 receptors than beta-2 receptors. As a result, with pheochromocytoma, the total effect on the vascular smooth muscle is vasoconstriction. Now, let's move to pheochromocytoma treatment. As we introduce the effects of this catecholamine secreting a tumor on adrenergic receptors, the treatment should include alpha-1 blocker and beta blocker. Alpha-1 blocker will antagonize the activity of catecholamines on alpha-1 receptors. As a result, the vasoconstriction is removed by alpha-1 blocker and the vasodilation effect from beta receptor activation has remained. So the net effect on blood vessels would be vasodilation and a decrease in blood pressure. Low blood pressure will cause reflux tachycardia, so a beta blocker is indicated to prevent reflux tachycardia. Here I need to clarify that beta blockers are either selective, act on beta-1 receptors, or non-selective, act on beta-2 and beta-1 receptors. But keep in mind that we may lose the selectivity of beta-1 blocker if we give a high dose so it becomes non-selective. Is it really important? Give an alpha-1 blocker first, then add on beta blocker. If patient takes non-selective beta blocker or high-dose beta-1 blocker before alpha-1 blocker, beta blocker will act on beta receptors in vasculature smooth muscle and block beta receptors distributed there. So vasodilation effect would be removed. As a result, the net effect on a blood vessel is vasoconstriction because at this point, the vasodilation effect is removed by beta blocker and catecholamine will only bind on alpha-1 receptor which will dramatically increase blood pressure and hypertension crisis will occur. That would not happen when alpha-1 blocker is given first. Alpha-1 blocker as we demonstrated will remove the vasoconstriction effect. This will decrease blood pressure and low blood pressure will cause reflux tachycardia. So for this reason, beta blockers are indicated and prescribed to prevent reflux tachycardia.